UFO abduction are not a new thing, but here is a case with several witnesses and scientific examinations which seem to prove it was real. Let's find out for ourselves. Make welcome Travis Walton and Mike Rogers. <laughs> We just saw a very small clip from the movie Fire in the Sky. Travis, it's basically your story, isn't it? Yeah. So you, you play the guy that walked out underneath the UFO. Yeah, that's me. Now, I, the thing is that, like, the big... I saw the movie, and the big beam of light came down and, and zapped you. Yeah. Yeah. Were you standing right underneath it at the time? Uh, almost underneath it. And then you disappeared for five days. Yes in which time you were taken by aliens? Yes. <laughs> now, we have a few sceptics in the audience. Do you pick that up, Travis? I'm not. Yeah. I'm with you, Travis. During this time, your, your, your best buddy, Mike, here, he, he, he left you there. He didn't come back to see if you were gone for a little while. Mike, do you feel guilty about that? I did for a while, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Poor thing, Travis, because he didn't come back. But he did come back in the end. But you weren't there, because by that stage, the, the, they'd taken you up into the UFO and that's when you had this experience that is what basically the, the movie's about. Uh, yeah, well, it's about the experience, but it's also about the way it affected me, the people around me, sure. the community and like that. Because during the time that you were missing, the people from around that area of the world, which is Arizona, were, were blaming Mike for your disappearance, which means from the beginning people were really not believing this story. Mm -hmm. Having said all of that, why have you decided now, after all this time, to, to bring it all up and have to go through this again? Well, you know, my hope was that if people could sort of uh, live through what we lived through, you know, to experience it for themselves, that maybe they could take a more objective look at this. Okay, well, in, to enable our audience to take a more objective look, let's have a look at another little bit from the movie, shall we? You expect me to believe that a flying saucer came down and took your friend away to outer space. That's the truth, mister. That's exactly what happened. Is it? Is it? According to your story, you never even went back to the clearing, so you don't know, do you? I didn't have to go back. Mike Rogers says he wasn't there. You can take it to the bank. And you know that, Blake. Why the heck aren't you speaking up for us? Why are you letting this man talk to us like this? David, I will. It seems like you're not even trying to believe us. We all saw the thing. We all saw the guy get zapped. You saw something. At least you thought you did. So that was James Garner. He's like our equivalent of Gerard Kennedy, I suppose, yeah. isn't he? That gun smoke type character. Was the movie fairly uh, apt? Like, was it fairly well based on the truth? Yeah, you know, it's a condensed, it's a dramatic uh, version of what happened, but, you know, basically it people come away feeling the kind of feelings we felt when it happened to us. Mm. Well, well, the bit that I, I, I wasn't quite sure about, Travis, having seen the film, and, and Denise was with me, you know, the whole bit when you were in the thing and you woke up and you were in like a cocoon and you had mm. like really ugly, slimy stuff all over you, mm -hmm. was that really what it was like or was that no, like jazzed no, up a bit for Hollywood? That was jazzed up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, because that so, was what I was like after an acid trip in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what actually happened, I mean, you're taken up there and, and they investigated your body? Is that what happened? Yeah. I don't know what, what happened there. You know, I was missing for over five days, but uh, I came to for just a brief period of time there. And, uh, it was, and uh, did you learn anything from them? 
No. I mean, like in terms no. of if they, you know, like did they seem intelligent? Did they have lots of lights, like in all the movies? And well, stuff? there wasn't a lot of lights, but they they seemed intelligent. So there's a lot of bits. Then that was a silly question. But. To, well, because there was lights <laughs> in the movie, and what, like I always wonder why whenever we talk about UFOs, there's always bright light, but you guys saw a bright light. Yeah. And and why does it get picked up on on like a plane <laughs> scanner or something? A UFO falling into our they atmosphere. They have many times. Have they? Sure. Oh, yeah. And yeah, what sort of motor do you radar, reckon it yeah. had? The <laughs> uh, is it a high breathing V8 or something? Chevy 351? <laughs> to go that quickly. Yeah. Well, that's what you said, Mike, when they put you back down on Earth, which was on, at a road. On a road? Yeah, yeah. Outside the town nearest. And you saw it go back up there? Yes. Wow. Mike, what was going through your head during all this time that Travis was missing? Well, we were accused of murder. I mean, that's serious. Uh, yeah, there was a lot going through my mind, and uh, I had a whole town disbelieving us. I had the police disbelieving us, and we were accused of murder, and I had to deal with all of that. Mm. Fortunately, uh, they brought him back. Yeah, fortunate for all of us. So, Andrew, you worked in what in MTV, right? Yeah. And so, do you reckon R Richard Wilkins is an alien? <laughs> <laughs> do you I reckon he's? No, I worked American MTV. Oh, because I was going to ask if his hair was for real. What, like Chewbacca or something? <laughs> <laughs> During this, just, now that now that you came back, Travis, like, has this really been haunting you? Like, did you still have nightmares and stuff? Oh yeah, you know, for months afterwards, I had a problem with, but I eventually got a handle on things and got back to normal. And you didn't see Elf or anything while you were up there, no. <laughs> Just, just, just. Okay, we'll get back to UFO topics in a minute because now it's coming, not a UFO. You saw it last night and next week it begins, Luck in a Truck. <laughs> Welcome back everyone. And Travis and, oh Mike, you won't be able to answer this, but Travis, what, what did these aliens look like? Because in the film they're kind of all little old pink crinkly things. Yeah, well, they changed that a little bit. They, they were actually a little different color and... Uh, Can you describe them for us? Well, they were basically humanoid looking, you uh -huh. know, small, four or five feet tall. Like two arms, two legs, sort yeah. of look like me? Yeah. Head, well, it's well, not so, well, that's not alien. <laughs> well, not <maybe>. quite. <laughs> oh, thanks, Sam. Do they have ears, nose, eyes? Right. Yeah, they had all those sorts of features, but so, they were... So they were, what made them aliens? What made them aliens? A pointy head or uh, they things were, coming out? They had very large heads. Uh, oh, I know and, some people like that. <laughs> and uh, enormous eyes. Really? Like with pupils and things like us? Or just, yeah? yeah? Enorm mm. And did they speak? No. And were they men or women? Or you don't know? I don't know. I wonder if they are in a male-dominated society like ours. Gee, I don't know. So. Well, our next guest says that what it means to be a man is up for reassessment. But from, he's from the fledging men's movement. It's the uh, Men's Evolvement Network. Make him feel welcome, John Byrne. Hi, John. Well, it's kind of like us and the guys, do it? Yeah, it's it? real blokey. I feel like I'm in the footy room, sort of. Welcome to the show, John. Now, tell us a little bit about the men's movement. Like